Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be explaining twin scroll turbochargers. Now if you haven't already seen my video on turbochargers and possibly my video on variable geometry turbochargers, you may want to watch those before watching this, um, but I'm going to kind of go into how this works and you may want an understanding of those before watching this. So basically a twin scroll turbocharger, what you're doing is dividing up the exhaust manifold, which exhaust ports go to uh, the two different scrolls of this turbocharger. So what it looks like is here's our engine and here's our exhaust manifold. And you can see that it's split uh, between the top and bottom cylinders and then the middle two cylinders. So your firing order goes one, three, four, two. So what this does is, I've, I've drawn in here so you can see one, two, three, four. And so what that does is it alternates which exhaust manifold here is getting uh, the exhaust going through it. So each of those corresponds to a different channel within this turbocharger. So you can see here, um, I've got this green exhaust drawn for the red one and that goes in and it's in a separate channel completely than this orange exhaust here which I've got for the cylinders uh, one and four. So as that goes in, it's got these two different channels uh, which divides up that exhaust and the only time it mixes it is once it hits the turbine. So then it'll come out together out of this turbocharger. Now, why would you do that? Well, I'm going to get into that later talking about uh, exhaust scavenging. Uh, one thing you may want to watch before I do discuss exhaust scavenging is my video on performance exhausts. Um, and that way I give you a better understanding of what exactly happens before going into the pressure involved. Now, another method of twin scroll turbochargers, uh, you actually have different size uh, scrolls or channels inside of this turbo. So, for example, here, the red one is larger um, and it approaches it directly from the side, whereas you have a smaller channel at an angle um, on the top. So, what that does is basically you're changing uh, the AR ratio of the turbocharger, and this is why I was saying you may want to watch my uh, video on variable geometry turbochargers. I go into that in much greater detail. But basically, the point is, the reason why you would do this is if you have a larger channel like you've got right here, this has a higher capacity, a lot more air can flow through it. If you have a, a smaller channel, if you have a smaller amount of air going through it, it'll speed it up a lot more. So for lower RPMs, this will maximize the boost as it'll send out the exhaust at a high speed. Whereas for higher RPMs, you'll have a lot more exhaust and this is going to kind of choke that. So you want something that can have more air flowing through it. So that's what you've got the higher capacity channel for. Um, and hopefully you can optimize this turbocharger for a larger rev range. Now, the main reason I was saying about this twin scroll turbocharger is uh, the exhaust scavenging. So basically what this looks like, here we've got a graph of exhaust pressure versus time. And this line in the center here is one atmosphere or atmospheric pressure, the pressure that's in this room right now. So basically what happens is you've got your, your power stroke and it pushes the piston down and then as that piston starts to move up the exhaust valve opens. That's where we're starting here. So as that exhaust valve opens the pressure quickly increases inside of the exhaust manifold. Um, and then as that pressure wave travels, that pulse of exhaust travels, it's going to drop the pressure and it's going to have a low pressure area behind it. So that's going to cause this pressure drop here. Now your intake is going to open uh, while your exhaust is still slightly open and this is your valve overlap. And so during this period there's going to be a slight amount of uh, negative pressure in the exhaust manifold and then once the exhaust valve closes it's just going to go to atmospheric and level off. Now when you have a four cylinder engine this is what it's going to look like. So you're going to have your cylinder one fire and then you're going to have that pressure and then you're going to have your cylinder three fire and you're going to see that pressure curve and then your cylinder four fire and then that pressure curve so on and so forth. Now why is it important that we change this? Well if you look at it here you can see that there's a negative pressure area under a positive pressure area. Now this positive pressure is what's driving your turbocharger. That pressure differential is what's forcing that turbocharger to spin because it's forcing the air to travel through it. If you have less pressure, you have less air forcing that turbocharger to spin. So what we've got going on here is you take the large area and you subtract the small area under it. That's basically what I've drawn out here in basic elementary math. You've got the big little hump here minus the little one underneath it. Um, you're going to have that four times. That's going to be the total amount of pressure for uh, one firing of each cylinder for your engine going to the turbocharger. So now when you take, when you split these two channels, what you're doing is you're spreading these out. 
So instead of having them all bundled together here, you've got this channel here, which you can see your exhaust fires, the exhaust valve, uh, the intake valve opens, and then the exhaust valve closes and it levels off, and all that happens before you get your next big pressure wave because you've split this out. So you've got one and four cylinders paired together, and then you've got your three and two cylinders paired together. So there's one and four, and there's two and three. So what you can do here is add these, so all of these are sending exhaust gas to the twin scroll turbocharger. So you've got this hump here with nothing underneath it, so no losses, and this hump here with also nothing underneath it, so no losses, and you can add those together, plus you've got the other two cylinders that are occurring. So overall you're going to have much greater pressure than you would over here, and thus your turbocharger is going to be able to create more boost and is more efficient. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.